My guest says there are forces in the invisible world that cause people to obtain tremendous wealth or paralyzing poverty. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I have a gentleman here that is an expert on the supernatural connected with finances. And many people think, finances? Supernatural? Yes, there are forces in the invisible world that could cause someone to become fabulously wealthy or literally crippled with poverty. Craig, give me an example of someone that you taught that use the principle, and as a result, their life and whole destiny changed. Well, I had a man that came to me several years ago, Sid, that uh, really was in poverty and had been in poverty most of his life. He wasn't homeless, but he was on the verge of being homeless. He was living with somebody else. He had not ever owned a home of his own. Uh, really never even had the money to rent an apartment. Had always been having to live with other people. Had very great difficulty keeping a job, that sort of thing. And he came to me and uh, was looking for some counseling, not even in that area, but other areas of his life. These things seem a lot of times to uh, be, go all together, you know, different, different sorts of things like that. And uh, I began to share with him uh, some of the principles that I have found of getting involved in the supernatural uh, with finances and, uh, and starting to uh, give his life to God and see what would happen in his life. And so with this particular man, uh, I shared with him some of these principles and he had a very amazing thing happen. He, he came to me initially with uh, 50 cents. Matter of fact, he told me he had absolutely nothing. And uh, I just felt a boldness right us up in me and I said, I don't believe you have nothing. Everybody has something. And uh, he said, well, I have nothing. So I said, empty your pockets, empty your wallet. And it turns out he had 50 cents that fell out. And I said, I knew you had something. Did he have a credit card? He didn't have a credit card. His wallet was full of air. That's all he had. 50 cents. It's, uh, I mean, I'd feel very uncomfortable walking around with no credit card and only 50 cents. <laughs> but OK, so I his, so I he don't had. think this man was pleased about having only 50 <laughs> cents, but uh, that was all that he had. And what I suggested to him, I said, you've done everything you know to do up to this point in time to try to change yourself, and you haven't been able to change yourself. I said, why don't you try giving your life to God and see what God would do for you? And uh, he said, well, I guess that's, I, I've done everything else, I'll try that. I said, here's what I want you to do. I said, I believe there's a supernatural force that's been working against you all your life that you're not even aware of. And I said, there's, there's a principle I know of to break the power of that supernatural force that's been working against you. And uh, so I suggested that what he would do is I said, let's pray to God and ask God how much of this 50 cents that you have that you're going to give to him. And uh, he said, well, I can't give any of it. Why? And he said, what, what, you, what can you buy for 50 cents? <laughs> yeah, what this guy said is he told me, I live 16 miles away from here and it's in the snow and I need 50 cents to get home on the bus. He said the bus doesn't take 40 cents, it doesn't take 30 cents, it takes 50 cents. And so I need the whole 50 cents to get home on the bus. I said, well, you know what I believe? I believe that when you break the power of what's been working against you supernaturally and you begin to release the power of God in your life, that God is going to supernaturally supply what you need to get home. Now, I know that's a very small thing, you know, thinking about a bus ride, but it wasn't small to this man. He was in great fear. Well, I can't give away any part of the 50 cents. I need the whole 50 cents. Well, he decided after a little bit that he would go ahead and, and see if God would do something for him. So he gave away five cents. And, uh, but let, let me ask you a question. Why, why sure. does God want a nickel? Yeah. Why? You, know, you know, that's an interesting question. A lot of people would think of that because a lot of people have heard, you know, televangelists or various people mm -hmm. that maybe they think are just after money or something like that. And in this case, I was able to tell a fellow, you've got to know that uh, I'm not interested in your money. It's not the money that's, uh, that's going to uh, do anything, but 
uh, why is God interested in that five cents? Well, because what it does is it begins to change something on the inside of that man. What I found out, Sid, is that man's trust was in money. His trust wasn't in God. His trust was in money. And what releases the supernatural power of God in a person's life, I have found, is when their trust is in God instead of in money. And so what that did, when he gave away that five cents, that put him in a position of needing God to do something supernatural in his life. He no longer had the natural means to be able to get himself home except to walk the 16 miles in the snow. Now, when he left my office, he was still a little, little bit irritated and a little bit angry. He said, well... How I'm amazed he even did it, to be uh, candid with you. Really? I mean, but he, he said, well, I'll try it. And uh, if you say God will do something, I'll try it. Well, he walked out uh, of the office a little bit angry, and he came back the next week. Uh, and he said, uh, an amazing thing happened. He said, you wouldn't believe it. I said, I bet I would. He said, when I walked out of your office, even angry and irritated, he said, I went down to the bus stop. And I was waiting for the bus, muttering about how I was probably going to have to walk home. He said, I looked down, and at the base of the bus stop sign, there was five cents, right? There was a nickel sitting right there. He said, I didn't even recognize it as God. He said, I just picked it up. I didn't know it was supernatural. He says, I said to myself, sure is lucky I found this. And he said, I was halfway home on the bus before it even dawned on me. That was God who did that. And uh, he said, when I began to acknowledge God, he said that something began to change on the inside of me because I said, God, you found me. God, you really do know who I am. You know where I live. You actually know me personally. You found me and you care about me. And you got me this nickel so I could get home. That, that's a great, great feeling to know that God cares about an individual. It wasn't a nickel. It was knowing that God knew his name, knowing that God responded to that prayer. So what happened next? That was powerful one? for him. Then, then when he got home, he said, you know, when I got home, I found an unexpected check for $5 that had come to me in the mail. And he said, uh, I just recognized that was a, just, again, just a token of God's love, of God multiplying the, little, the five cents that I had given, and it came back a hundredfold in one day to be $5. And he said, not that... Uh, that five dollars is any great thing, but he said what it really demonstrated to me is that God really knows me, that there really is something moving in the supernatural realm, and he said, I noticed that I had broken that negative power that had been working against me all my life, causing me to trust in money to the extent that all I had was 50 cents, and he came the next week, he said, I've got two dollars this week. He says, I want to give some of that to God and see what God is going to do. And what I noticed happened in this man's life is his uh, trust changed from being in money as a source. But, but how about a period of time that elapsed? Is that still true? How do you mean that? In, in other words, is he still oh, uh -huh. out of this rut? Yes. Or it, did it just slip back? No, it was life changing for him because for the first time in his life, said this man saw that, that God really was somebody that he could trust as opposed to trusting in money and that changed his whole life. And what I saw week after week after week as I continued to meet with this man is that uh, he had two dollars the next week and the next week he had sub substantially more and it was only a few weeks before he had a regular job and then he had an apartment of his own which was the first time in his life. And that sounds wonderful, but you say, what's a nickel? <laughs> what, what is five dollars? What is getting a job? That doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I have a job. Well, we're going to find out in the next segment about what happens when you use these principles in the stock market. We'll be right back after this. to Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I know you didn't go away because I said, how do these principles work that affect the invisible world with something more than a nickel or $5? How about the stock market? 
Let's go to Janie Duvall in the control room, producer of It's Supernatural, and what happened to you, Janie? All my life, I've always had problems with finances. I, I wasn't in debt, so, but when I listened to Craig's teaching, it, it totally changed because I never could get ahead. But I listened to his teaching and because I, I was wondering, what is it? Why am I not getting ahead? And then I realized I, he had all these principles and I found the key for me. And the key was that I needed to pay my father back. Now my father told me that I didn't have to pay him back. He, had, he loaned me some money and he said, oh, you don't have to pay me back. But I realized so that. So why would you pay him back if he said you don't well, have you know, to pay him back? That's what I thought. I thought, well, I don't have to pay him back. But Craig, in Craig's teaching, he, was re he explained it all. And I realized I need, to, I, I, had, I need to keep my word and start paying my father back. Even if I feel like I don't have the money, I need to start just giving him a little at a time. Well, the moment I made that decision and my husband and I agreed to it, Someone owed me money for a year and a half for some music that I composed, and the, I, I, I just felt I was never going to get that music. Well, a few days, uh, the money for that music, a few days later, the, uh, the money came in for that. So here was money owed to me, and that came in. And then there was an item that I was trying to sell for, oh, about a year or a year and a half, and it was this ring. And I would put ads in the paper. I could never sell it. About a few weeks after that, I put one ad in the paper, sold the ring in a second. Well, all of a sudden, people started giving me things. I would need something, and all of a sudden, they would give me what I needed. They didn't even know that I needed that. And this started happening more and more. But then I started, I was interested in the stock market, but I lost money in it, and I was really not that interested. Oh, well, that's kind of difficult to lose money in the stock market with the market that we've had, but um, you did. Well, you I was. I would get scared and just say, forget it, and just take my money out, and I kept on losing and losing and losing. But all of a sudden, I started getting dreams, and these were dreams from God, and he would tell me about a specific stock, a specific price, where to buy it, and... This has been happening over and over, and all of a sudden, there's been an incredible increase. And that's just one of the things that's been happening when I listen to his teaching. Craig Hill, how do you, how do you explain this from the invisible world? What did she tap into when she returned the money to her father, which she didn't even have to do? What I found happens, Sid, a lot of times people don't realize that there are supernatural forces involved in very natural aspects. I mean, money is a very natural thing. A lot of us have to deal with it every day, and people don't realize it. What I found that people don't know is that there is literally a spirit whose purpose it is to cause people to trust in money, to focus on money, uh, to impoverish certain people, and to enrich other people, uh, but to cause their whole lives to focus and center around money. Uh, in the Bible, this spirit was identified and talked about as the spirit of mammon. And what a lot of people don't realize is that... I, I've uh, heard mammon means money. Yeah, a lot of people just thought mammon means money. But what, what many don't realize is that that actually is a spirit in the demonic realm that works. Uh, and it, it uh, in past centuries, had drawn people to worship it. As a matter of fact, Philistine people 2,000 years ago worshipped this very spirit called mammon as an idolatrous mm -hmm. or false god. These peoples worshipped it. And a lot of people think, well, that was just a long time ago. That, that doesn't uh, exist anymore today. But you find it sure does exist today. And th that very spirit is impacting people's lives and hinders many, many people, like Janie was just sharing, causes people to focus on money, causes people sort of to forget about debts they owe, not get around to keeping their word, some of those kind of things. And I believe what, what Janie just shared, what happened, Sid, is that when she, when she changed the way that she was dealing with her father, her father had said, here, I, I'll lend you some money, pay me back when you can. And of course, we all know when you can comes, <laughs> that right. never comes. And, and then eventually the parents <clears throat> say, well, it, it, it's so difficult. Uh, let's just forget it. Let's wipe the slate clean. Right. Sometimes they, they, they do do that. What she did, though, in this case, is she, she used a correct principle, which was she stepped up to her debt, acknowledged it, and instead of focusing, and this is what so many people do with finances, they focus on what they don't have and they can't do, 
And, and what they need to focus on is what they do have and what they can do, and that's what Janie did. She focused on what she had and began to pay her father a little bit at a time to begin to pay, pay him back. And again, like in the, in the last segment, we were talking about that fellow's nickel that he gave. Mm -hmm. It's not so much the nickel that does anything, and here the amount she paid her father was not, uh, that wasn't the significant part. It was that she acknowledged the debt and began to pay him that changed something in the supernatural realm, broke the power of the way this spirit had been controlling her life, hindering. Uh, I mean, I've seen it because I work with her. Yeah. And uh, she told me about one stock that she bought that went from a few pennies to dollars. I mean, talk of hundredfold so, multiplication. I mean, and, and God told her to buy it, but this did not happen until this spirit was broken. Tell me some ways that we can identify if the spirit's attacking us. Well, it, it, this spirit causes a focus on money. Another thing this spirit does is keeps people awake at night worrying about, am I gonna have enough money? Am I gonna be able to pay my bills? Lots of worry and fear and anxiety. Uh, impulse buying is another symptom of it. Hmm. Can't say no to, uh, you know, people will get home many times and say to their marriage partner, I bought such and such. And the partner says, well, what is it what is it good for? What are, you, what are we going to use it for? And a person says, well, I don't know what we'll use it for, but it was cheap. I got a bargain. I got a deal. And so this spirit causes people to buy things they don't even need. Uh, this spirit causes people's minds to be consumed with money. That People just think, if I just had more money, my problems would be over. And does, keep does this sound like you? If it does, we're going to tell you how to break that spirit off of your life. We'll be right back after this. We yep. wanted to discuss how to break the power of this spirit in the invisible world yes. by the name of mammon. Yes. How do we do it? You know, a lot of times people don't recognize the spiritual forces, but I liken them to television waves. A person may not recognize their television waves right in their room at the moment, but it, that's not a theory, that's not a concept, that's not an idea. Everybody watching this broadcast right now is experiencing the reality of the television waves, even though they didn't know they were there till they turned on a TV set. Well, the spirit of mammon is just like that. A lot of times people don't recognize its presence, but they see the symptoms of it, some of those things that we were mentioning earlier in the broadcast today. And uh, so how do you break the power of it? Well, the first thing is to recognize that it is indeed influencing your mind, that it's influencing your actions, that it's, it's influencing the way you think, uh, causing you to be uh, con in continual bondage to debt. So you recognize it. The second thing is what I found, uh, what people need to understand, it's not just a matter of breaking one thing without replacing it with something. And so it's like a volumetric displacement that needs to take place. It's like uh, if air is bad in your, in your fuel tank, how do you get rid of all the air in your fuel tank? Well, you don't just hook up a vacuum pump and try to suck all the air out of your fuel tank. So with this negative supernatural force of the spirit of mammon working in somebody's life, it's not just a matter of ridding your life of that and breaking its power. We want to replace it with something that is supernatural that's going to do some good. So if you want to get all the air out of your fuel tank, you replace it with, with fuel. And uh, so as the, as the tank fills up with fuel, it naturally evacuates all the air. So what do we want to do with our lives? Well, we want to break the power of the spirit of mammon and replace its influence with the spirit of God. So we want to give our lives to God and allow God then to begin to fill our minds, fill our thinking, fill our uh, our lives and God, just like what happened to Janie, where that spirit of mammon had had a control and, and she was focusing on money, when she changed that focus... She actually went against that spirit. Yeah. And by going against it, what happens? She, yeah, she said, I am going to give my life to God in this area. I'm going to let God begin to supernaturally rule my life in this area. And you know, when you do that, the Spirit of God comes, fills your life, and breaks the power of that spirit of mammon. Give me one specific thing I could do to um, break that spirit. Uh, one thing that you can do right there is you can begin to give money. Giving uh, is a very practical thing that a person can do because the spirit of mammon says money is the source. And that's not the truth. God is the source. So when you begin to give money, which is what that mm -hmm. fellow did we talked about in the first part of this broadcast, it begins to break the power of mammon. That's okay, what about, what about someone, and I'm talking about just about everyone that's watching us now, yes. that owes a lot of money because something called plastic credit cards <laughs> 
have, are, are just occupied, have made it so easy. Yes. And, there's, and commercials are so good. Yes. That they've bought so much junk that now, now it doesn't make sense to give money when you should be paying off your credit cards because let's face it, you've got a, you've got a family you have to provide for. Sure, there's, there's two things that I think always need to happen. We always need the supernatural power of God and we need to do very practical things as well. So one a very practical thing someone could do is right now go get those plastic cards that are controlling your life and you can heat your oven up to 350 degrees, put them on a Teflon cookie sheet put them in for about four minutes and make yourself a very nice wall hanging. <laughs> yes, but someone's already done that. Now what does he do? Now the next thing they need to do is they need to make a list of every one of those co uh, companies and people that they owe money to, like Janie did, even including relatives. And oftentimes people forget their own mm -hmm. family members. And what you do is acknowledge, first of all, those debts, step up to those debts, contact but them. Now most people want to stay away from the people they owe the money to. Sure, and that is that spirit of mammon working hmm. in their life, filling them with fear. It's a negative supernatural force in a person's life. The way you break it is by doing exactly the opposite so that you go to every one of those creditors, make agreement with them. And what I've found so many times, Sid, is that doing that thing, which is a very natural thing to do, releases God to do very supernatural things. And I've found that now, when- what, what type of an agreement? that uh, they make with, a, with well, someone they owe money to a credit card Suppose company. you owe a creditor uh, an amount of money that is not possible for you to mm -hmm. pay at this point in time. You, uh, and obviously a component of this we don't have a lot of time to talk about now is to create a budget so you know what you're dealing with, mm -hmm. so you know how much you do have to allocate to creditors. But then you go to that creditor and you allocate a certain amount to that creditor. Let's say you owe them $300 a month. It's mm -hmm. not possible to pay $300 a month. You can go to the creditor and say, look, would you be willing to receive $75 a month? That's what I can do. So yes, but if you do the 75 with that compounding of interest, you keep getting in the hole. That's right. So in the natural, nothing will ever change. No. You'll always just be going downhill. But we're not looking to the natural here to change things. We're looking to the supernatural. We're talking about this principle that when people do the natural thing, in breaking the power of the spirit of mammon, they're releasing the power of the spirit of God, and God will do supernatural things, and I have seen thousands of dollars I of debt canceled. I want to hear one person, one real person, that has had a miracle, a supernatural miracle. Sure. I know one man, actually, this was a, a man that lived in South Africa that owed a massive debt to uh, a corporation and uh, hid from it for years, just kept trying to get away from it, finally understood this principle and went to all of his creditors, including this particular one, a company to whom he owed a lot of money, and all he could pay was one rand per month. And a rand is about 20 cents of a US dollar, so it's a pretty small amount. Nothing. Yeah, close to nothing. And he said, that's all I can, I want to pay this debt. I acknowledge this debt. Uh, but by stepping up to that debt and offering to pay that one rand, which he did consistently for over a year's time, paid that rand every single month of that company, at the end of the year, the company called him up and said, you know, we just feel like we'd like to release you from the debt. We're going to cancel it and uh, we're going to release you from that debt. And it was uh, many thousands of rand that were canceled when he stepped up to his debt. He saw something supernatural happen. You know, one of the big problems, I believe, is not just the spirit of mammon, but a spirit of fear. There are people that are watching me right now that you are fearful of what is going to happen. Right. You don't know the future, but you can know the one that knows your future. The one that says, not two sparrows fall to the ground without my heavenly Father being aware of it. And of how much more value are you than the sparrows? I have every hair on your head numbered. Trust me, put me first, start by repenting of your sins, telling God that you're sorry, because against Him and Him alone have you sinned. And ask Him to forgive you, and plead the blood of Jesus over your sins, and he says he'll just wash them away as if they never existed. And nothing is going to separate you from the love of God. And then ask 
God who is love to come and live inside of you. Perfect love casts out all fear. If you'll say that prayer right now, I make Jesus my Lord. Lord Jesus, come inside of me. Take over my life. I love you, Lord. I want to know you. I don't want to know about you. I want to know you. You're real. There's an urgency for someone to do this right now. The choice is yours. God has already made his move. He says, I want you. I love you. I need you. It's a destiny on your life. There's purpose, purpose.